to him. So I'm swear all the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please be seated, sir. And then would you state your name and spell your last name, please? Patrick Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. And Your Honor, prior to the, or during the break, I was informed that Ms. White is going to be the uh, person from the District Attorney's Office handling these two witnesses. I'd like to make a statement to the court for the jury to understand and for everyone to understand that I am calling Detective Kennedy now so that he may st testify as to part of the confession given by Mr. Dahmer. Uh, he's going to testify to the early part of the confession that was given by Mr. Dahmer that subsequent to a certain period of time, Detective Murphy came in on the case and that he and Detective Kennedy then took most of the other statements from Mr. Dahmer. We are only going to go through the part where Mr. Kennedy was alone. Then we are going to dismiss him with the understanding that the state will be calling him back later for other reasons. Then I'm going to call Detective Murphy to the stand to continue the giving of the confession that was taken by Mr. Dahmer. I am therefore at this time going to ask some preliminary questions and I'm going to ask that my, um, uh, the entire confession be marked as an exhibit and if it is going to be received, I'm going to ask the court to hold that it not be shown until such time as a chance to clean up some of, the, some of the underlining and things of that nature. So I'd ask that the entire confession that's going to be talked about by Detective Kennedy, Detective Murphy, be marked as Just so, <clears throat> so the record's clear, I'm, I'm showing you defendant's exhibit number one for identification, and I ask you if you look at that briefly, do you know that to be the confession that you and Detective Murphy took from Jeffrey Dahmer, and especially the first four pages as being part of that confession with you personally took from Mr. Dahmer while Detective uh, Murphy was not present? That's correct, sir. And as far as you're concerned, you've had opportunity to look at this confession in total? Yes, sir, I have. And, and is the, uh, the document that I showed you the confession that was taken? Yes, sir, it is. I, I move, Your Honor, that it be received in the evidence as Defendant's Exhibit 1, the confession given by Mr. Dahmer to the Milwaukee Police Department over a period of days, which will be identified as we go along, with the understanding that I will have an opportunity to remove superfluous things from this document that do not have any relevancy to the issue before this court and this jury. Your Honor, the state has no objection to the admission, the reservation of those extraneous matters um, in the confession being removed. Okay. We're doing I'll that. the evidence, the but I'm going to have to have a stipulation as to anything that's to be removed. We're, we're working on that and doing that. Okay. Okay. Detective Kennedy, you're a member of the Milwaukee Police Department. Yes, sir, I am. For, <clears throat> for what period of time have you been so employed? Twelve years. And when did you join the Milwaukee Police Department? In March of 1980. And what age were you when you joined the police department? Twenty-six years old. Prior to joining the police department, what, if anything, did you do? I worked for uh, the state running halfway houses for delinquent youths. The time you, when did you become a detective of the Milwaukee Police Department? Not quite three years ago. And since that time, you've been functioning as a detective with the department? That's correct, sir. <clears throat> Did there come a time on July the 23rd, 1991, while in the course of your official duties as a detective of the Milwaukee Police Department, you came across the person at Jeffrey Dahmer, he being the gentleman seated next to my associate, Wendy Patrick? Yes, sir, that's true. Let the record reflect that Detective Kennedy has uh, identified Mr. Dahmer. Yes. Detective Kennedy, uh, what were the circumstances under which you uh, became uh, aware of Mr. Dahmer? And <clears throat> would you tell the court and the jury how that came about, please? I was working uh, on a homicide squad on the late shift. My partner, Michael Dubas, and myself were sent to Mr. Dahmer's apartment uh, to investigate a head which was found in the refrigerator. 
And that apartment was located at 924 North 25th Street in the city and county of Milwaukee? That's correct, sir. What apartment was Mr. Dahmer's apartment? What was the number? Number 213. Did you have occasion at that time to make some observations concerning that apartment? Yes, sir, I did. But since I've already informed everyone here that we're going to only talk about the statement, we'll limit that aspect of your testimony to that, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Did you start talking to Mr. Dahmer about anything? While I was in the apartment, sir? Yes, sir. No, sir. Did you have occasion to transport him from the apartment? Yes, sir, I did. And, and who did you transport him with? Uh, <coughs> in a Milwaukee police uh, van, which is used to convey prisoners, Squad 93, uh, police officer Alan Chessel and myself. So you started taking him down where? Downtown? That's correct, sir. And he was in custody? Yes, sir, he was. You advised him of his constitutional rights? Yes, sir, I did. You told him about all of his rights? Yes, sir. Did you ask him if he wanted to make a statement? Yes, sir, I did. And did he make such a statement to you? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> you also advised him that he, <clears throat> that he had a right not to have an attorney if he wished. Is that that is correct. Okay. All right, tell us what you uh, said to Mr. Dahmer and what he said to you uh, during the time that you were present with him where Detective Murphy was not, okay? Yes, sir. Would you Let like me to read from, from the exhibit if you wish? Okay, sir. At this time, I rode along with the suspect, Jeffrey L. Dahmer, in Squad 93 down to the CIB. Explain what that is, CIB. It's called the it's, uh, initials for the Criminal Investigation Bureau. That's the Detective Bureau. Please. Once at the CIB, I advised Jeffrey L. Dahmer of his constitutional rights, and he stated that he fully understood them and that he wished to freely make a statement regarding the incident. Can you tell us what time of the morning, night, or day it was? This was approximately 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, that would have been on the morning of the 23rd or the morning of the 24th? That would have been on the morning of the, of the 23rd. Okay, continue on, please. At this time, Mr. Dahmer states that he is 31 years of age, born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He states he moved to Richfield, Ohio when he was about six years old, and he was raised there and attended and graduated from Revere High School. He states he spent three years in the Army after graduation and moved back to Milwaukee when he was approximately 23 years old or so. The subject states he has a father who lives in Pennsylvania and a mother who lives in California. He states he has one brother, 26, living in Cincinnati, and his grandmother on his father's side lives in Milwaukee. The subject states he was raised in the Protestant faith as he was growing up, but he now considers himself to be an atheist. Let me just stop you there. Is this a question and answer type of thing? Yes, sir, it is. And then later you put down whatever notes you thought were important and then you transcribed them into the form that you're talking about here. That is correct, sir. Continue on. He admitted that he had been arrested in the past and states he is currently on probation for taking Polaroid pictures of a minor. Subject states that when he was 18 years of age and living in Richfield, Ohio, he picked up a hitchhiker whom he described as a white male about 19 years of age. He states he took him home and had homosexual sex with him and states they were drinking beer and became intoxicated. He states they got into a physical fight because the 19-year-old individual tried to leave and that during the fight, he states he struck the hitchhiker with the barbell. He states that the blow of the barbell caused the death of the hitchhiker. And at this time, he took the body out into a wooded area by his house and left it there to decompose for about two weeks. Let me, let me stop there. Did you know that there had been such a murder or a homicide that had taken place when he was 18 years of age at the time that you were talking to him? No, sir, I did not. So he volunteered a commission of a murder? That's correct, sir. Is that the first murder that he told you about? Yes, sir, it is. And you didn't have him on any other murder charges at that time, did you? I realized that there was a head in the refrigerator. I understand that. But, but you no, didn't sir, have didn't. a murder. You didn't say you're under arrest for the murder of. No, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Continue after. He states he returned with a sledgehammer at this time and used it to break the bones, and then he scattered them about the woods. The subject states he moved to Milwaukee after a three-year tour in the Army and a one-year stay in Miami, Florida, where, according to the subject, nothing of this nature happened. Subject states he moved in with his grandmother at 2357 South 57th Street when he returned to Milwaukee. And he states that when he was about 25 years of age and living in Milwaukee, he picked up a white male approximately 25 years of age at the 219 Tavern. He states they got a room at the Ambassador Hotel and they got very drunk and passed out. 
Subject states when he woke up, the guy was dead and had blood coming from his mouth. Let me stop you. Did you know of that homicide at the time that he volunteered it? No, sir, I did not. Continue on, please. He states he went to the mall and bought a large suitcase and stuck the dead body into it. He states he called a cab and placed the suitcase into it and went back to 2357 South 57th Street. He states that he took the dead body down his basement near a floor drain and used a knife to cut the flesh off the body and then dismember the body, placed the various parts into plastic bags and then threw them into the trash. The subject feels this occurred in 1984 during the summer. He indicates that there had been many times that he has had sex with men where no violence was involved, and states that about two months after this incident, he met a Hispanic male about 18 years of age, also at the 219 Club at about 1 a.m. They went back to his grandmother's place and had sex and put sleeping pills in his drink. He states when the guy fell asleep, he strangled him with his hands and took the body down the basement by the drain and used a knife to dismember him and a sledgehammer to break up the bones and then placed them in plastic bags and threw them into the trash. Detective Kennedy, did you know of that homicide at the time you were talking to Mr. Dahmer? No, sir, I did not. Continue on, please. He goes on to state about a month later, he met a black and white mixed male about 20 years of age at the Lacage, a tavern on National Avenue, and took him back to his <laughs> grandmother's house where he had sex and used sleeping pills with him. He states when he was asleep, he strangled him and then dismembered his body and disposed of him in the same manner as before. Did you know of that murder at the time you were talking to Mr. Dahmer? No, sir, I did not. Go ahead. The subject states a year went by and he met a Hispanic male, about 19 years of age, at the 219 Club and returned with him to his grandmother's house where he again had sex, used sleeping pills, and strangled him and again dismembered and disposed of the body in the same way. Once again, you didn't know about that homicide? No, sir. Go ahead. Subject states he moved to 808 North 24th Street and lived there for a year and was arrested one time for taking pictures of a minor. After one year of work release from the House of Correction, he moved back to his grandmother's house and lived there for approximately six months. At this time, he moved to 924 North 25th Street, apartment 213. Subject states in the winter of 89, he met a black male about 24 years of age in front of the bookstore on 27th Street and took him to his apartment where he took pictures of him in various sexual poses and had sex with him and put sleeping pills and a coffee and rum drink which he gave to the black male. When the black male fell asleep, he stabbed him with a large hunting knife which he described as having a six inch blade and a black handle. He stabbed him in the neck. After the guy was dead, he put the body in the bathtub and dismembered him. He states he used the knife to dismember him. The subject states he used a plastic trash container or garbage bag and put the bones in it with hydrochloric acid and let them sit for about three days until they turned to a mushy substance. And then he flushed them down the toilet. The subject states that he filleted from the body from the the subject states the flesh he filleted from the body he put into trash bags and threw them out. You didn't know that homicide, did you, at the time you are talking? No, sir. Go ahead. The subject states he also, starting with the third victim, boiled the heads in a cl cleaning solution and kept the skulls. He kept the skulls in the closet. All identification and jewelry of the victims, he states he cut up and threw out into the garbage. The subject states about two months later, he met a black male about 20 years of age around Wisconsin and water and walked home with him and again had sex, used sleeping pills, which was placed in a coffee mixture and strangled him. He then dismembered the body and disposed of him in the same manner as before. You did not know of that murder? No, sir. Go ahead. Subject states he began getting quicker at cutting up the bodies. The subject states, about one month later, he met a tall black male about 26 years of age at the C'est La Vie, and they took a taxi home to his apartment, and he repeated the same scenario with him, but did not boil and keep his head. The subject states this was due to time constraints. Subject states, about six months later, he met a black male about 20 years of age while in Chicago, and rode back to Milwaukee by Greyhound bus. He states before this, he met a Chinese male about 15 years of age at the Grand Avenue Mall. This was around May or early June. 
He states they took a bus back to his apartment. It was during the day or the afternoon. He states the Chinese male posed for Polaroid photos and then he gave him sleeping pills and the coffee and rum drink. After he passed out, he strangled him and dismembered and disposed of his body parts in the same way as before. Once again, these last two or three murders he's talking about, you had no idea about. That's correct, sir. Go ahead. The subject states that the body parts gave off an awful smell in the trash, but no one ever did anything about it, so he just kept following his usual procedure of disposal. Regarding the black male from Chicago, he states that he repeated his usual actions with him. Regarding the head in the refrigerator. Now, let me stop you there. Uh, at the time that you were there, and, and understanding we're talking primarily about the confession, there was a head found in the refrigerator of the apartment. That's correct, sir. It was not identifiable as to whose skull that had been, correct? Not at that time, sir. Okay, no. continue talking. Regarding the head in the refrigerator, he states he met him, a black male about 25 years of age, at 27th in Wisconsin, and took him home and repeated the same actions with him. He states about one month ago, he bought a 57-gallon industrial drum and began placing body parts in it. Subject states on about 7-19 of 91, he met a white male about 25 years of age near Marquette University and took him home, had sex with him, gave him sleeping pills and the coffee rum drink, strangled him and filleted him in the bathtub, dismembered him and placed the body parts in the industrial drum. Another homicide you did not know about. That's correct, sir. Go ahead. Regarding the Chinese male, the subject states that after giving him sleeping pills, he fell asleep and he, the subject, went to the bar on 27th Street. He states that as he left the bar, he saw the Chinese guy running down the street naked and the police saw him and stopped him. And he was not speaking any English, so he talked with police and said that he was a friend, a friend of his and that he was staying with him. At this time, he took the Chinese guy back to his apartment gave him some more coffee and rum solution with the sleeping pills in it, and after he fell asleep again, he strangled him, dismembered him, and disposed of him in the usual way. He then boiled his head. He states it takes about an hour to boil a head. Regarding his last victim, he states that his ID can be found in the bedroom of his apartment. Was that a fact? That is correct, sir. Go ahead. Regarding 723 of 91. That's the, the, the evening or the early morning hours when he was uh, arrested. Yes, sir. The subject states he met a black male about 25 years of age at the mall on Wisconsin Avenue. He states he offered him $20 in cash to let him take some nude pictures of him. Once at his apartment, they drank rum, and he, the subject, got intoxicated. When you say the subject, you mean who? Mr. Dahmer. Okay. Subject states that he tried to put handcuffs on the victim, and the victim ran out and got the police. Subject states he is not sure what happened next because he was drunk. Regarding the handcuffs, he would ask his victims if they would allow him to take a bondage picture with the handcuffs on, and that is how he would get them handcuffed. The subject states there is an ID from the male he met on 27th in Wisconsin in his wallet. Is that a fact? Was that a fact? Yes, sir, it was. Go ahead. The subject states that all his victims knew that homosexual activity was the idea and possibly pictures. At this time, after the subject gave me this statement verbally, I advised him that I would like to write it down verbatim on paper. However, before I did so, I would like to get another detective to sit in and be witness to this statement. He stated he understood and that he wished to cooperate. And at this time, I went and got Detective Dennis Murphy, who entered the room. And together, we reiterated his constitutional rights, which he stated he understood and that he wished to waive them in order to help us with this investigation. It was during this time that a four-page confession was written out by myself, Detective Kennedy, and read back to the subject who also read it and then stated that it was accurate and true. And then he signed it, Jeffrey Dahmer. He also initialed each page of the four-page confession. It should be noted that during this entire time that I spoke with the subject, Jeffrey Dahmer, he was given numerous cigarettes, four to five cups of coffee, two glasses of water, two cans of Coca-Cola. He was also allowed to use the bathroom upon request. This entire confession started at approximately 1.30 a.m. and finished at approximately 7.15 a.m. After the confession was completely written out, read over, and signed by the subject, he was asked if there was anything that he would like to do or if he was hungry. He stated that he was not hungry and probably will not be hungry for a long time. 
However, he would just like to sit and talk about the offenses a little bit more. The conversation which followed at this time has been recorded by Detective Dennis Murphy, and he will file a detailed supplementary regarding what was said during this interview. Okay. Now, uh, you understand now that I, I understand that you're going to be called back later for additional questioning by either side. Yes, sir. But it, the, during the time, just, just so it's clear, he was very cooperative. Yes, sir, he was. And he was not intoxicated. No, sir, he was not. And he seemed to understand what you were asking him, and, and, uh, and you understood his answers. Yes, sir, he did. So this was done in a, in a colloquy back and forth, and what you're telling us here is you put down these words after you talked to him, looking at your notes, and then eventually he signed the papers. That's correct, sir. Were these the papers that he signed? These papers here? Yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, something else that you wrote out. That is correct, sir. Is it exactly the same thing, only in handwritten form? Yes, sir, it is. So you, you wrote everything here out in handwritten form. Mr. Dahmer read it, said it was correct, signed it, and then you took all of that same information and typed it up, and that's what you just read. That's correct, sir. Okay. And we'll see you again, Detective Kennedy. Any, any questions at this time? Um, not at this time. Okay. Um, Detective Kennedy may be recalled at a later time. Okay. Give me a step down, sir. Detective uh, Murphy.